Sublime technique, excellent ball recovery, imposing physical presence, great leadership. Hardly any other players have perfected the art of ball winning and box-to-box -box play more than the Senegalese-born Frenchman Patrick Vera. At the peak of his powers, he was one of the best in the game. From his early days at AS Cannes and AC Milan to teeing up with his fellow Frenchman Arsene Wenger at Arsenal and short stints at a couple of clubs before retirement, we will go through Vieira's days as a player and even now as a manager. In an invincible Arsenal team that dominated the late 90s and early 2000s with Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp grabbing all the headlines, people often forget how good Patrick Vieira was. But before we recount Vieira's glittering playing days and promising managerial career, how about this for a goal? Born on June 23, 1976 in Senegal, relocating to another country at eight, divorced parents at a tender age, Patrick Vieira didn't have the easiest of childhoods and that could probably be part of what made him so tough. As a child on the streets in Senegal, he made football out of clothes, plastics, and just about anything so that he could play with his friends. At eight, his family relocated to France in search of better opportunities. Fortunately for the then Senegalese, his grandfather served in the French army, so he was eligible for French nationality. Vera started his youth football career in France at a young age, between 1984 and 1993. He featured for three different teams in his youth career. In 1993, at the age of 17, he made his professional debut for Cannes, and by 19, he was already captain of the French club, a pointer to his leadership qualities even at such a young age. As you would expect with any talent, big European teams came knocking, and Vieira moved to AC Milan, a team that had just won three consecutive Serie A titles and made it to its third consecutive Champions League finals in the summer of 95. He found first-team opportunities hard to come by with the more experienced Marcel Desailly and Demetrio Albertini occupying his positions. Vieira made only two first-team appearances for the club before sealing a move to Arsenal the following season. And it was at Arsenal that he would blossom into arguably the most complete midfielder in football. As one of Wenger's earliest signings, Vieira was bought for £3.5 million, which raised a few eyebrows seeing that it was big money for a 20-year-old back in the day. But the Frenchman was quick to prove himself, bringing the much-needed versatility to the team according to former teammate Ian Wright. But it wasn't just the versatility Vieira brought. His competitive nature, aggression, and physical dominance helped Arsenal to a third-place finish at the end of the season. Still, there was something missing. Vieira couldn't do it all at the midfield, so the following year, his fellow Frenchman Emmanuel Petit was brought in to help him, and that would prove to be the final piece of the puzzle for the talented and motivated squad. Vieira now had the freedom to make his trademark lung-bursting runs to the opposition box, knowing that the midfield was in safe hands. Arsenal won the 97-98 Premier League and FA Cup double, and Vieira had two goals and four assists in three appearances. But then stats are only half truth, because how do we explain through stats that his six foot four presence alone scared other players or the way he timed his runs and positioning? Following the double, things didn't quite get rosy for Vieira and Arsenal. A resurgent Manchester United beat them to a number of trophies and Vieira's competitive nature started landing him in trouble. The number of cards and suspensions he received started to increase. The height of it was in 1999, when he shoved Neil Ruddock in the face and then spat on him after being sent off for a challenge on Paolo Di Canio. He was given a six-match ban and a £45,000 fine for his actions. But then, Vieira was already a World Cup winner, and although not a regular starter for the 1998 French team, he made his mark with the opportunities he was given. The 2000 European Championship came, and by then, Vieira was a sure starter. In the Premier League, Arsenal continued to battle it out with the Man United for all titles, and Vieira established a fierce rivalry with Roy Keane. In the 2001-2002 season, Arsenal won another double, with Vieira making 36 league appearances, and when Tony Adams announced his retirement, everyone knew where the armband would be going to. Now captain for the Gunners, Vieira continued to lead the team. Although they lost the title in the next season in disappointing fashion, the 2003-2004 season would remain unmatched to this day. Vieira captained the famous Invincibles where they would go unbeaten throughout the entire campaign. 
he made 29 appearances with three goals and four assists. By now, Arsene Wenger would already be making plans for a more dynamic midfield with Cesc Fabrega at the helm of matters. Vieira scored the final spot kick in Arsenal's 2005 FA Cup win over Man United as he drew the curtain to his Arsenal career. His outstanding performances in the Premier League saw him being featured in the PFA Team of the Year six times in a row, as well as winning the 2001 Premier League Player of the Year. In 2001, he was also named French Player of the Year and was the captain of the Invincibles while lifting three league titles and four FA Cups with Arsenal. Vieira moved to Juventus for £13.75 million to play alongside Nedved and Del Piero, but Juventus got caught up in a match-fixing scandal that saw him relegated and stripped of the Serie A titles. Like many other of his high-profile teammates, Vieira jumped ship to another club, Inter Milan. Although he won three back-to-back -back Scudettos with the team, he failed to establish himself as a regular starter. No thanks to the injuries, and should we say aging. Finally, Vieira moved on to Manchester City in January 2010, linking up with former Arsenal teammates Colo Tor and Silvino under Italian manager Roberto Mancini. He won the 2010-11 FA Cup with the team before retiring at age 35 in July 2011. Being a great player doesn't necessarily translate to being a good manager on the sidelines. How has Vieira fared dictating things from the touchline? Before succeeding Roy Hodgson at Crystal Palace in what was a surprising decision, the former Arsenal captain had only been a manager for about two and a half years. But that's only half truth. Shortly after his retirement, Vieira started crafting a coaching career for himself. He started off as a football development executive at Manchester City, and he was part of those overseeing the youth setup at the club. Shortly after, he became the manager of City's reserve team. In 2015, he was interviewed by Newcastle, but recruitment and transfer policy disagreements meant that the club had to look elsewhere. Not to worry, the Frenchman became the second head coach of New York City FC, one of the newest sides in MLS in 2016. He held the post until May 2018. During his time with the club, he led them to the playoffs by finishing second in MLS's Eastern Conference, which was seen as a success. Afterward, he returned to his homeland to coach Nice in June 2018. A seventh place finish in his first season and a fifth place finish in the second season were not enough to keep the Frenchman's job. Following a string of bad results, he was sacked at the end of 2020. But roughly six months later, he would get his biggest managerial job till date. Replacing Roy Hodgson at Crystal Palace, not much was expected from Vieira, but within a year, he turned the team into overachievers with a bright future by implementing a possession-based game. The team finished 12th in the EPL, had a famous 2-0 win over Manchester City, and made it to the semis of the FA Cup. Vieira was inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame this year. For anyone privileged to watch Vieira play at the peak of his powers, he was a joy to watch. Only a few other players have been able to excel in virtually almost every aspect of play. He had it all. Excellent ball control, passing, dribbling skills, physical presence. He was indeed a remarkable athlete capable of leading his team in transition with his giant strides. But perhaps one of his best traits was being a natural leader on and off the pitch. The once shy teenager became a fighter, a trait he has carried into his managerial career. He'll be best remembered for his nine magical years at Arsenal, where he won major trophies and became an instrumental figure in the Invincibles.